Muscle Car Corner here with Ned Kraft. Um, he works at the museum part-time, uh, donates his time to go ahead and uh, curate these cars and uh, explain a little bit about them. So uh, Ned's here. We're going to talk about this 72 Corvette to start with. So Ned, uh, tell me about yourself real quick and uh, we'll talk about some cars. I've been in the antique car hobby uh, since about 1974 and have owned uh, uh, a couple of antique cars, uh, 1962 Crown Imperial and uh, a 1940 Chevrolet Special Deluxe Four Door Sedan. And I do not have any anymore. So the next best thing is to volunteer at a car museum where most these hundred plus cars in here seem to be kind of act like uh, they're mine because I take care of them all. So, uh, gotcha. Uh, so I really enjoy it. Uh, this is a 1974, uh, 1972 uh, 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 unrestored original. It's a T top for a bit. So, uh, it's, it's a small been, block car. It's been uh, in here uh, a couple years now at least. Gotcha. Well, that was the last year of the uh, steel front bumper and the rear chromettes in 73, which I have a 73 I've had um, pretty much its whole life, um, which was my grandmother's car, has the rubber front bumper. In 73, they made them put the five mile an hour impact bumper on these and did away with the chrome. So 72 was the last year of the uh, chrome front bumper. In 73, they changed this terrible wiper design uh, and went up under the cowl hood. 73 was the first year of a cowl induction hood, which mine is, which sucked in the cold air through the grates and, and pulled the cold air in. And 72 was the last year of a knockout back window. The back windows came out on 72 also. So kind of a unique year, um, 73. Um, you know, there's, those were the changes on it, the back window, the wipers, the front um, bumper, and the great grates and the fender. Now, this is showing an original dealer insignia, which is kind of cool. You don't see that too often. Um, but this is original paint on this car. So it's a pretty cool piece. So we'll move on to the next one, Ned. Which one here? is a 1963 uh, split window Stingray. Uh, of course, it was the only year that they had the uh, split window. Come to find out uh, that uh, there was a uh, big blind spot in the back yep. for drivers with that split window. And, uh, one year only. One year only, and uh, in fact, uh, uh, dealers could go to a dealer and they would change it to a full uh, rear window. Yes. With no split window back then. So that was a major job to do that. You had to cut, you know, into the body itself and, and put the rear window in it, you know, and it was a different animal. And this was a one-year-only, a two-year-only hood. I think 63 and 64 came with these grates on the hood. Uh, this car looks good white with the red interior. It's a small block car, 327. Um, there was uh, 10,494 produced in, in 63. This car has 65,000 on it. And in 89, he purchased it, purchased it for 12,000. So that was a good buy back in the day. And here's another, uh, this is 64 Stingray. So. I was incorrect. It's 63 only on the hood, hood slats. Those grates, my, my bad on that. Um, this car uh, looks like Terry Lewis owned it, and original price is $42.52. And uh, that was a good buy for it back then. It was a 300 horse, 327 four speed car, which I like. Those little small block 327s were quick. And it has a full rear window. Uh, 63 because of the, uh, the problem they had. Yeah, let's go ahead and show that real quick. So when they had to install those windows, um, 
on the 63 if you didn't want that it was a major job installing this window if you look at the bar they had to cut the roof to install it and uh, that was a pretty major job i wonder how many were changed back in the day you know and if those cars are around they're worth a lot of money because they were an oddball you know nice little c5 what year do we have here, Ned? Yeah, I've got one of these in a Z06. And uh, it was quite a bit of money back in the day. 43, uh, 735. I know my 02 was about 55,000 because it was a Z06 hardtop. I love the car. Um, these cars and Z06s are just a rocket ship on the tracks, you know. Oh, nice. Nice. It was a present to himself by him. <laughs> and uh, he now has a couple more Corvettes. So he throw and He has put this one in, in on display for a while. Safekeeping, you know. Easy storage. Well, I'll tell you what. This 61 is a cool piece. Tell me a little bit about that, Ned. Well, I do know that... Uh, It's not an unrestored original. It's uh, it, the paint job. It's been on there for quite a while. Mm -hmm. uh, however, uh, it does not have a Corvette engine in it. Really? Right. Uh, the owner, I don't know if he put it in, uh, but uh, it's actually got a 351 in there. Oh, boy. Ford. 351 Windsor, huh? Or is yes. it Cleveland? I'm not sure which. Gotcha. But he said it had a 351 in it. That's crazy. I've never heard anybody removing a small block and putting a Ford motor in a Corvette. That just don't set right for me. Corvettes should have a small block in it, you know, or a big block. They didn't have them in this year. I don't know if he changed, he put it in or if um, he bought it like that. But it's a crossbreed, you know. But anyway, it's, uh, it's a nice car. It's a yeah. Oh, 61 was the last year of the trunk car. 62, they changed, so that was the last year of uh, having a trunk on the car until the Z06 came out um, from GM in the, the 2000 range. So kind of unique on uh, the 61. They had neat designs, and that white cove with the red paint really looks nice. All right, now this is something I know a lot about here is a Pontiac Trans Am. Why don't you tell me a little bit about this one as well? Well, this is a 1974 Super Duty Trans Am. Oh, yeah. And uh, its original price was uh, $5,295. Mm -hmm. It's got the special uh, 455 factory racing engine in it. Uh, it says it shared very few cars with a conventional Pontiac 455. And, uh, well, the 421 was brought back from the 60s um, when drag, you know, in the early days of drag racing, they had the 421 Super Duty Pontiacs. They were tearing up the drag strip back in the day, so they thought they would bring back the Super Duty in uh, 74. And uh, they were all forged internal. Um, you know, there's a lot of work put into them through Pontiac Racing Division. And these, these cars, with a little bit of work, they were only 290 horse from the factory. But with a little bit of work, you can pump these things up to 450 horse without any problem. An intake carb, headers, and a different cam, in it, you know. And uh, these cars were the last of the good ones. This was the big horsepower show back in 74. You know, the Corvette didn't hardly have anything in that to 454, about the same horsepower as this does. So, 
Um, these cars are really rare and they wouldn't make that many of them. And I like it in the Buccaneer red like this. So, you know, me, myself, being a Pontiac guy for many years and owned a lot of Trans Ams, I really like this car. It's really nice. What do, we, what do you think about it? It's very nice. Uh, uh, is it a four-speed car? Or is it it's probably an automatic? Not a lot of them came with four-speeds. Yeah, it's an auto. Really? It's an original Georgia car. It's, uh, it's got all uh, correct numbers, numbers matching everything. Yeah. These cars really came into their own about eight years ago, and they bring in big money. Um, if you got one that's original, and these things are worth some money, they're great. They used to be a great buy, but they're not anymore. They're very expensive to buy, so. Want to do that Ford Torino next? I love me a, a 70 Torino. I had a 70 NASCAR pace car Torino that I sold at Mecham several years ago. And I tell you, I really like that car. It's neat. So tell me about this car here, Ned. This is a uh, 1970 uh, Ford Torino Super Cobra Jet. It gotcha. was uh, uh, built at the factory with the Super Cobra Jet engine already in it. And with all the different modifications on this car was done at the factory. Uh, according to the owner of this vehicle, uh, it was one of 125 that were built at the factory in this configuration. And also, as far as the owner knows, according to the owner, there's only 35 cars like this in existence. Wow. Left. They're rare. And uh, back in the day, if you wanted to purchase the uh, Cobra Jet engine uh, as a, to put in your car, uh, it cost $155. For the option. For the option. Yep, engine. yep. To go from the 351 Cleveland to the 429. And there wasn't a lot of the Cobra Jets made, you know. I had a 70 429 NASCAR pace car. There was 11 of them made, and they were prepared by Homer and Moody. And I had one of the 11. Uh, they were baby blue with all the decals. It was a North Wilkesboro car. So these cars are really rare. And, you know, Torinos weren't that big of a deal throughout the, the early days of the 70s and 80s. These bought, cars could be bought for near nothing. They didn't, they didn't bring a lot of money. So now they're worth a ton of money. This you know? car has the optional drag pack uh, yes. uh, with it, uh, which was $229 at the time. And then it uh, also has the optional uh, 429 uh, V8 uh, gotcha. performance uh, engine. Do you know what came in the drag pack as far as when you check that box? I can elaborate on that. Um, yeah, the heavy... It's got uh, with the Super Cobra jet engine. It's got the four bolt caps on the middle three mains. Yep. Uh, Forged aluminum pistons, heavy duty connecting rod, a more aggressive solid uh, lifter cam, a Holly uh, 4150 carb and oil cooler, uh, headers, and more. Yeah. You know, when you did the Super Track Pack, you got the oil cooler, you got a heavy duty fan clutch, you got the heavy duty clutch itself. It had the locker forward rear end under it. And uh, it would come with a 430 gear. It was about the lowest gear you could get in, which was, a, you know, stoplight gear. First to fourth, you're, you're at the next stoplight, you know. <laughs> so these cars are super neat, and there's not a lot of them around. And um, it's one of my favorites here, you know. I'm not a huge Ford guy, but I like this one. And the color just does everything for this car. With a flat black hood and that shaker hood, it's nice. Yeah. I know this one of your favorites, isn't it? Oh, yeah. And how long has this one been here? It's been here at least two years. Uh, two years? I saw a video on you guys driving this one. Well, last year uh, at the uh, Miles Tour time, uh, uh, car car show, the owner of the car was here the day before they took it out and drove it up and down the road. And nice. 
smoking some tires, I'm sure. Nothing like doing what they're supposed to do, you know. These cars are made to run hard and, and run them. That's what it was all about. Well, I tell you what, I like this Torino. This is one of the nicest it's cars. It's one of the favorite cars in the museum when it people is. come to uh, uh, visit. You know what? In 70, that was a decent price, 3800 for this car. Um, I don't know. That seems very low, you know, where a Charger in 70 was around 4700 You know, my 71 Charger RT was like 48 and change, you know, a little under 5000 back then. And you could buy a Ford for a lot less. That's, that's, I did not know that. Well, let's take a look at some Buick products over here. I'm an old GS guy. I love these GSs. They were sleepers back in the day. And uh, they were 455, and they had around 500 foot-pound torque from the factory. And that's what these motors were all about. They didn't turn no big RPMs at 455. Was, was out of steam at like 5,500, 5,800, you know. You didn't have to, you didn't have to, um, you know, really twist these motors up. So well, tell, tell me what to, about this car, Ned. Well, I don't have a lot of information about these three other than the fact that these three cars here uh, are all owned by the same, is, the same owner has them all. And, nice. Uh, they were uh, on display at Floyd, Floyd Garrett's Muscle Car Museum in um, uh, Sevierville, Tennessee oh, yeah. for a long time. That's closed now. And, right. When it closed, uh, they ended up in this museum. Nice. Nice. Well, this guy, hats off to him. You know, these cars are uh, really neat. And the convertible itself, GS, is, is a cool, cool car. You know, they were called the gentleman's muscle car back in the day because they had all the creature comfort, you know, power windows and this, that, and the other thing. But, you know, if your grandfather bought one of these and had that motor in, you know he was smoking the tires around town every once in a while, you know. I haven't seen too many in this color, this, this uh, yellow. Yeah. 72, and that went for 47.12. The price came up on those a little bit. It's one of 114 made, so pretty rare car. And here we go with a stage one Grand Sport 4880. You can see they went up every year. And um, I just love these cars. A buddy of mine, Steve, uh, he's got he's built a lot of these cars and I've ridden them and they are really fast. They'll put you back in the seat and just hold on. It's gonna smoke the tires and go sideways, you know? So, super cool cars. Well, on down, um, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, a Shelby right here. That's a pretty neat car. Something that he made before he died and produced. It's a Series 1. There's the insignia on it. These had a 5.0, if I'm not mistaken, 5.0 engine in it. I don't know. What, what it's a we supercharged got? engine. Supercharged uh, yeah. 5.0, I believe, if I'm not mistaken. $181,000 for this thing back in the day in 99. There wasn't anything that had this kind of horsepower and style back in 99. This was... Uh, this is a 1999, and uh, this is a 100 number of... Uh, it's the 125th uh, car built of 249 of these were um, produced. Wow. They were uh, built for uh, Playboy Enterprises, huh. and uh, uh, the entire car is uh, carbon fiber. Yep. Uh, and uh, uh, this car actually was uh, uh, given to uh, Karen McDougal, who was the... Uh, uh, Playmate of the year for 1998 for uh, Playboy. Okay. And uh, she'd been on the cover of Playboy magazine a few times. And uh, but she was kind of a car person herself. Really? She had uh, $60,000 worth of options put on the Oh my gosh. And uh, some of the options, it was a 
polished uh, shell of the S1 supercharger with uh, polished engine uh, supports, mm. uh, uh, a 6S big brake system, custom manufactured six and four piston calibers, painted in red, two-tone full leather interior, custom perforated silver seat inserts and door swoops, bright silver carbon fiber rear taillight bezels, uh, a GF, G, GFG three-piece chrome wheels, staggered set of 19-inch front and 20-inch rear wheels. Yeah, because of that stance and, and look. Platinum gold stripes with the Carroll Shelby signature on the hood uh, extrusion. Yeah, that makes it worth all the money right there. If you want to see this car at Miles Two Time Automotive Museum, you need to come here before uh, uh, June uh, this year, as uh, it will be uh, coming back, going out of the museum uh, towards the end of June. Gotcha. Of 2024. All right, all right. Well, a unique vehicle, no doubt. Uh, let's look at this. Uh, this is based off of the old uh, Hearst. Yeah, this is a uh, 2006 uh, Mustang uh, GTH. Mm -hmm. A lot of people say, well, what does the H stand for? The H stands for Coach rent a car uh, Ford Motor Company owned uh, Coach rent a car mm -hmm. uh, And uh, so when they uh, built cars for, for the rent -a, Coach rent a car they would always put an H uh, next to the GT. Yeah. They always, I think all of them were black with gold as well. There's some crazy stories about that back in the day. Um, a friend of mine worked at a Ford dealer back then, and when they, um, and he worked at Hertz. And when they rented these out, people would come and get them for two, three days. And there were stories of people removing the 289 Hypo motor and putting a regular 289 in and bringing it back with a different motor. That was something that, that I don't know if it was true, but I'm sure there's a lot of people that took them to the drag strip and they removed motors and put other motors in. They'd have to be really good to do that, you know, in a three-day period. But I heard it did happen. So just a little something that I do know about the Hertz, the early Hertz Mustangs, you know. Well, I do know that uh, uh, whether it's... Uh true or not but i saw it on facebook so everything must be true on facebook right? yeah yeah but anyway you know real world was an advertisement that's been coming up on my uh, facebook page and uh it said rent a uh, 900 horsepower uh mustang hertz mustang and they had las vegas chicago Miami and another city yeah. in the United States where you could rent them. Yes. And uh, 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 and it showed a uh, advertisement of them zooming down the highways. Of course, I don't know if that was all true or not, but uh, <coughs> 900 horsepower. I wonder how many police officers you'd find. Uh, <coughs> anyway, uh, and I had a friend that was. Um, uh, that worked for Hertz. He was a mechanic for him for 45 years uh, uh, in Daytona Beach, uh, Florida. And uh, since Hertz was owned by Ford, every year he bought a brand new pickup truck at the uh, Ford employee price. Yep, yep. Well, it's a cool car. I like the story on it. We've got uh, a couple other kind of neat pieces over here. I love the Chevelle. This is an interesting Chevelle. Uh, it's, a Mount, well, it's a Malibu SS, mm -hmm. uh, 1964. Uh, however, it's considered a resto mod. Uh, as you can see, it's got an LS uh, Cadillac engine in it. Yep. And uh, the interior is uh, a Cadillac interior. Really? And uh, all the... Uh, it's uh, four-wheel disc brakes. Um, everything has been uh, uh, redone as new, but the body of the car is still an original 1964 uh, Malibu SS. Yes. I always liked these early Chevelles. This was the first Chevelle Malibu that they had. I had a 64 El Camino 
327 four speed car back in the day. And I love, I always, I just fell in love with these Chevelle style bodies, you know. And I love the, the El Camino, you know, it's got the same front end on it. They were just unique looking and it was a good looking body, you know, it was a square body, but they use a lot of these for drag cars too, you know. But that's a neat build with the LS and the late model interior in it. I like it. I like it. Well, I can tell you this is just a little story. Uh, uh, in 1964, I was uh, 14 years old, and uh, my uh, best friend's uh, parents uh, bought a brand new uh, 64 uh, Malibu, and uh, we were over at their house. My parents were over at the house, and Michael and I, we went into the garage and we uh, sat in their brand new uh, 64 Malibu and pretended we were driving. Of course, we, di we didn't have a driver's license or anything and we didn't have the car started, but we just envisioned driving down the road in this beautiful 64 brand new Malibu. Mm. Was it an SS? No, it was not. Gotcha. Still a cool car though, you know. Yeah, I, I, I took that a little further. I, uh, my dad left the keys in cars before I had a driver's license, and they would go to the Elks Club for the night, and they wouldn't be home until 12, 1 o'clock at night out hooping it up, you know. And me and my buddy, as soon as they were gone down the road, we'd be in one of the cars taking them down the road, doing burnouts, you know, and we had no driver's license, and we were a little crazy back then to, to steal one of my dad's cars. and. Fortunately, we we got we did get caught, but he didn't beat my butt too bad, you know. Good story about the, when you're a kid and and you know taking dad's car out. That was a, a big deal. So we got a V here, one of the early V's. A friend of mine just bought one of these, and it's got 670 horse, a new one, and it is just crazy fast. I don't know why you want, you know, that much horsepower in a Cadillac, but I guess it's to uh, get your people where they need to go, you know? I was never a Cadillac person. No, me yeah. neither. Me <laughs> neither. Now, what do you know about these AMXs? Okay, uh, both of these AMXs are owned by the same person. Mm -hmm. uh, both of them are uh, unrestored originals. Uh, this one here is a 1969 AMX. Uh, and it's got the uh, big bad orange um, paint job. Yeah. It's uh, uh, one of only, um, there only 284 uh, uh, AMXs uh, built that year that uh, had the big bad big orange, bad orange. Uh, paint job on it. I did not know about that. Uh, and this one being, it's an unrestored original, original paint. Really? And uh, it only has uh, 37,000 miles on it. Wow. And as you can see, it was um, on the cover of a muscle car month magazine. Yeah. Like, you know. I'll show that. I'll just coming around. It's amazing to see one with original paint in it. That is just crazy. With 30,000 miles, this is probably one of the nicest, cleanest AMXs out there. And I do remember this color because it, it would catch your eye, boy, when it went by. So we got Restoration Page and Muscle Machines. Hemmings Muscle Machines. Yep, yep. It was a striking car, and these cars were uh, very short wheelbase with a big block in them and a four-speed. They would come around on you in a heartbeat. Um, they were a neat car. Have you ever ridden in one of these? Uh, yes, back in the day. In, uh, they were quick. In 1969, I was a senior in high school, and uh, one of my friends um, had a uh, AMX along with uh, uh, Barracudas and uh, GTOs. Back oh, then. yeah. And, you know, the kids just drove, we drove them to high school. Uh, I had a 1966 Dodge Charger. Mm -hmm. uh, but, uh, we, that uh, was the start of it. Yeah. Well, you know, these cars were rare. They didn't make them for... Too many years they went to the javelin after this but quick little story um me and my dad built a lot of cars we had asphalt uh cars we had roundy round cars uh dirt and in 1975 we bought a amx out of the salvage yard 
and it was a 390 car. And we decided to go racing at Daytona at the 24 hours of Daytona. So we built this car for the 24 hours of Daytona. I think we had about $5,500 in it total. And we pull up to Daytona with this old car trailer open, you know, the tires up front and we pull in there and I was the chief go-getter. My name was on the side of the car, but we we actually made it for 14 laps before the bottom end blew out. And AMXs weren't known for having real good oiling. They didn't have real good, uh, you know, the block was made as substandard. It wasn't a high nickel content. AMX just didn't have the technology that Mopar, Ford, and Chevy did. You know, they weren't there. So they were quick, but they weren't, they weren't uh, Mopar, you know. But they're neat cars, and the shape of them is just so unique. You know, they were kind of futuristic looking to me, you know. What did you think about them back in the day when they first came out? They were really nice. Yeah. They were good cars. <laughs> Especially with that orange. That just popped, you know. Now this one is this green. Yeah, this green. It's a 1970 AMX. Which they changed the hood in '70. Right. Was that a real Ram Air induction hood? Did it have Ram Air? I wonder. We'd have to open the hood to do that. Can you can you open the hood on this one? Oh, well, don't worry about it. If, I could ask Sean. He's right here. Yeah. You know, it's 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 really easy to open these. You just got to get the second secondary. I just wanted to see if it's got a uh, real ram air, if that was a functional hood or not. They weren't easy to get the hood up, were they? I don't know how you get them open. Yeah, don't worry about it. We'll just say it does have ram air. I, I wasn't sure of that. That was a question on my part. Is this an original low mileage car, too? Yeah, this one only has 38,000 miles on it. And it's a, also a, an all-original, unrestored. Unreal. But you know what? Looking at the inspection sticker from Georgia, it was 1970 was the last time it was through an inspection. So that tells you this car, you know, sat a long time. And it's uh, it's a 360 cubic inch engine. This one's a 360? Yeah, it's a wine metallic. Huh. I thought it was a 390, they changed it. Look at that, the original selling dealer was in Atlanta. This is an original car that's been around this area for a long time. That is just really cool. It's automatic. Yeah, that was the first year of the 360, I think, if I'm not mistaken. They went from the 390 to the 360, which wasn't near the motor, but. The fellow that owned the car uh, put it in his parents' uh, garage. Actually, for the uh, next uh, 40 years, the car sat in his parents' garage. Wow. And, uh, uh, True garage find. And, and unfortunately, whatever happened to the uh, mom, the uh, parents' uh, son, uh, never came back. And uh, his mom didn't want to ever sell it because she was hoping he would come back for the car, which he never did. What happened to him? Was he in the service or something? Doesn't say. Doesn't say. No. Hmm. Kind of a neat story. And, uh, a few years later, it was uh, uh, purchased uh, uh, from the man, from, uh, uh, from the guy's brother. Mm -hmm. and there was a, so, uh, That's cool. I don't need a little story on these two AMXs here, Miles Through Time. Automotive Museum. And we got a couple nice Mustangs over here to look at. Some original Shelby cars. This one here is a 1968 uh, uh, Shelby Cobra uh, GT350. And uh, when this car was um, uh, built, uh, it was uh, purchased immediately uh, uh, from a Japanese company that uh, purchased the vehicle and they took it back to Japan. They changed the VIN number on it. Really? And made various changes in the hood and uh, some of the uh, deep, 
some of the labels and stuff under the hood are all in Japanese. And then at some point in time, it made it back to the United States, and a fellow walked the car, and uh, he put a low bar in it, inside of it, and, all, and he raced this car. Okay. That's what they were made for. Those little Hypo 289s were screaming little motors, boy. I love it. It's sharp. It looks good in this color, too. It is a four-speed car. Shelby had some neat design, didn't they? And so what do we have here? We got another GT350. Mustang here. This uh, Mustang is a 1967 uh, Shelby Cobra GT500. It was the first year for the Ford Shelby Cobra. And this car was built at the uh, uh, Shelby American factory in Venice, California. Oh, okay. And it was the 575th uh, car built. Wow. And uh, uh, it's one of our 19 vehicles. I do not know the paint name on it but this green is one of only 19 that were ever painted that car well it's a i think it's the same color as the bullet mustang in 68 if i'm not mistaken and, uh, this car here uh, we have a monitor up there that shows a commercial that this car this car that we have at the museum was in the commercial on the west coast of the u.s okay and uh it uh driven in the commercial by Harold Shelby's wife and uh, after the commercial was done Harold Shelby bought the car for his wife and uh, neat story uh, the, uh, the current owner of this car found this car in Texas and did some research and found out the history of the car and that it actually was Harold Shelby's first Ford Shelby Cobra that he ever had bought. Wow. And, uh, uh, so that makes it worth some money. He went to uh, Goodyear Tires, and Goodyear Tires had the uh, uh, name uh, a complete set of polyglass tires uh, for, specifically for this car wow. using the original 1967 molds that they had. Mm -hmm. Unique hood on this year. I like that hood. Sharp. These things were quick with those uh, three three nineties though. And it's an automatic car. Beautiful restoration on it though. Because of the uh, own the car, uh, it would be upwards of a million dollar value. Yeah. I would say. Quite a unique vehicle. Sure. It's one thing that Shelby didn't do a lot on the inside of these. I think it's floor mats, that uh, steering wheel center cap, whatnot. They didn't put as much as they did later on you know, on the interior, showing it's a Shelby. Beautiful. All right. And we've got a couple more Mustangs over here. I think this, what is this, a Heritage Edition? Yes. I do like this car. I think it's super cool. This one here is the newest vehicle that we have in the Damn, it's a uh, 2022 uh, Shelby Cobra. Mm -hmm. And uh, the uh, price on this one, brand new, uh, is $150,000. And the uh, current owner bought the car in 2022 uh, in Alpharetta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And uh, it, uh, he then uh, brought it to the museum, and it's been in the museum ever since. It still has the temporary tag on it. 2022. Uh, How many miles are on it? I believe there's less than 10 miles on the Wow. Bus. 
Oh. And it has, oh, it's a future collectible. It has uh, an $18,500 carbon fiber racing package with it. My Plus, gosh. there is a $3,000 technology package on this car. That's crazy. And of course, it comes with those seats, where, which are amazing. And this car right out of the box is a road racing machine, you know. That is sharp. I tell you what, I like these new Mustangs. They're nice. You know, and when Carol died, price of these cars went up about 20%, 20 to 30%. Just because of who he was, and uh, it's good stuff. I met Carol Shelby one time at uh, the Amelia Island Concourse d'Elegance mm -hmm. uh, at the Ritz Carlton in yep. uh, Amelia Island, Florida. I've been to that show a few times. Yeah, you mean both. Well, I tell you what, I want to take a look at. Uh, the, I'm an old Mopar guy, so this this Plymouth wagon, uh, suburban. 1961. Suburban. This is a 1961 Plymouth Suburban. <clears throat> if you notice, uh, there is no back seat in this car. That's because uh, this car was purchased uh, from the factory by the U.S. Air Force. Really? And it was uh, uh, assigned to Minot Air Force Base in North Dakota. And uh, it was used to uh, transport uh, equipment to the planes. Wow. It's only a two-door, no back seat, yep. plenty of uh, cargo space. They've made very few of these cars. I've only seen one in existence ever, and they're rare. The two-door, you know, uh, Suburban, they called it. In 62, they went to a, a 330 body style. They had a 330 and a 440. It had nothing to do with the engine. It was just the, the body design. The 440 had more chrome and more more uh, creature comforts. So this wagon is super rare. My Mopar people out there, I know you're gonna love this thing because I've only seen one of these in existence and I saw one in a junkyard many, many years ago. I wish I would have erected it and got it out of there, but it's, uh, it's a rare piece. I love Mopar wagons. They've always been one of my favorite. Being I owned a 1963 330 wagon with a factory four speed. It was uh, called the Hearst. It was black with red interior. So, I uh, these cars are near and dear to my heart. I I enjoy a Mopar wagon. Go figure, you know. All right, what do we got here? Interesting car. This is a 1956 Lincoln Premier, and uh, the Premier was a top of the line for Lincoln in 1956. Uh, what makes this car a little special is that uh, uh, it. Uh, uh, the body here, the paint job on the body, uh, this was painted in the early 1980s. Mm -hmm. The last time it was painted. Wow. The interior of the car is all original. Wow. This was a unique car as well. Look at that leather they used back in the day. It's still in decent shape after all this time. I like the black with the, the black inserts in it. it looks really cool this is a factory color on this i believe so is they it? said that it was uh it was just repainted in the, in the early 80s mm. it's a premiere look at that emblem and if you look on the emblem back here it's a knight yeah it is isn't it's, it yep the helmet of a knight huh. What years did they make this car? Well, I know this is a 56. I'm not sure uh, how long they made it in this style. Mm. Lincoln Premier. Mm. 4600 back in the day. That was a lot of money for this car in 56. You had to have some coin in your pocket to get that one. You know? Unique piece. Well, we'll uh, take a look at this Comet real quick and wrap her on up. Never been a huge Comet guy unless they had a 427 in it. They made these in a two-door drag car from the factory with a 427. 
Thunderbolt uh, Comet. Look at the price on that back in the day. That was average money for a car. Well, I tell you what, Ned, I really appreciate your time. Uh, we've covered a lot of these cars in here, and uh, I think I'll be back when they get a change up on this and uh, revisit this place and come on back and maybe be a regular and help you guys out and see if we can really light this thing up and get, get some of my subscribers here to look at these cars. It's a great deal. You need to come down and look at it. Um, you can put your car in this museum for X amount of time. I don't know what the time frame is, but if anybody lives uh, close to Georgia and you want to put a car in this uh, museum, it can be done. Just get a hold of Sean. Uh, he's the, the man that uh, basically started this whole right. thing with his, yeah, with his grandfather's Cadillac that I did a video on, which is right there. We went in through that car in depth. There's a half an hour video on it. So, and for all people that uh, listen to uh, Brad's uh, YouTube channel, uh, uh, majority of cars in here are uh, all privately owned. Yep. There's yep. Seventeen, eighteen cars actually are owned by the museum. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, there, at various times, uh, uh, Sean, when Sean's ready to uh, have people bring their cars in, he'll ask uh, different owners to take their cars out if they've been in here a long time. Yeah. yeah. So if you come back in six months or a year or whatever, uh, there will be different cars. It nice. Change up, and it's unlike some collections that are static and they never change yeah you can come here every six months for a year and uh, there will be different cars uh to look at nice nice well sir i sure appreciate your time thank, thank, thank you, you so much and uh muscle car corner signing out on a neat collection of muscle cars and all different types of cars y'all stay tuned for the videos we got some good ones coming at you muscle car corner signing out at Miles Through Time Museum in Clarksville, Georgia. Thank you so much to my subscribers and I hope you all enjoy the videos. Please give me a thumbs up and subscribe. I sure appreciate y'all. Thanks so much.